Uh, it's love poems. For Dom, the billions of these people in the data set, pixels on a big, wet screen. <laughs> For James, loxodrome or totality in which the stars are blue and bright bring stony relief to people crowded under the moon's got a scabby landscape, glacial glare, its quarries and tailing ponds coming down the line, its nasty optics. Rhomboidal forms as city blocks laminated together by sea and sewer water, the meniscus curve. Our fingerprint on the planet terraforms the megafauna. I feel aquafina flow through the pipes and love the concrete sense of dysprosium bits in which our voices pluck satellites just before breaking around the rectangle in my pocket, the brick, your pulse, and everybody too. For K, a sonnet. Love poems are so full of shit, and yet here we are, pissing in the alley. I'm on my cellular, like really small, in the green shade acquired by a Canadian tire across the valley, where nothing withstands the anthropological weight of cool noodle microplastics and airsoft shotguns as the currency collapses. Who would save us from Western civilization anyhow as Troy was caught in the liminal space between mother and fucker as slow as a trucker on the scenic route imbued with lube and humected by hand? Does your poem spin or just stand there? For Ed, tough to just stand there and talk about it. At the end point of the line segment, joining the co-vertex of an ellipse made up of people turned towards you, we call a reading. Rhyme is one way of doing it. Put everything in a row, add sound, invent a bigger voice, get it all in front of you. Only don't be absolutely embarrassed by it, naked on the beach or in your own home, to try and stand there pretending you aren't even breathing. None of that oily sun and its deadly rays reflected off your blonde torso, submerged in Prosecco, has to go anywhere as in some nice music for the nightclub management. No life jackets. Hard water, impossible to drink, let alone think about the ooze and spurt your brain does on two pills of Tylenol. Spill your guts into the gutter, the color of butter. If the grass is green, we eat it, and even if we agreed, what then? For Luke, the bluebell carpet dies this early in the vernal season, dubbed by the poets we can't stand, who won't shut up about the same three or four poets we all lust after. De Prima, Spicer, Baraka, Prin, and Sean Bonney, which makes five which means I'm guilty, Canadian poetry doesn't count. <laughs> you know I love you, so you know how seductive it is. I mean, your heart will never stop breaking, you say, to the big historical force you call disappointment, or despise the things that ripple between us like a reading, or a bar, or your book, in which we graze our worst feelings drinking tap water snowy with line scale. But I can't. Not because you hate that, or because we're dipoles separated by concrete distance. Even if you're writing and my reading as a surface area, I spin out of it. So the first little bloodsucker of spring pricks her proboscis through me. Seriously, I don't see why they put a rainbow in their logo for poetry the same way Raytheon or the CIA does. 
and explain their reasoning with the kind of prosody you'd have to employ to sell a used car. The body memory soon cold of someone else being so cagey in riots where actual people got the shit beat out of them. I was, I don't know, 15 years old in my suburban home, barely reading, let alone writing. Even during our own time, the catastrophe fades while the unusual heat is as real as those sick women sprouting from a bed of pine needles and broken glass bloody with beer, more tangible than a pair of Nike shoes for a baby on a low stone wall I can almost reach and untie. People even go back to paying $17 for a new book of poems or $8 to go to a reading where the poet will use so much prose to pad their little project until one day someone traveling furiously past you wears a gas mask over their face and you remember, golly, that happened to me. As an image to be taken and deleted, it doesn't go anywhere. Now we both have to put on our tired smile. You, for the 100,000 hours of online teaching. Me, for my supervisor, poet. Why should we scruple? Ripped and dotted for extra stimulation? If the pages stick together and squirm in their fetters, why feel anything? Your beard almost poses this as inquiry into its construction, glides over the bumpy grass, the incapacity to love. The road sign says, no cat's eyes drift in front of a million apple blossoms, cake with pink light. Cripple Rainforest. Giving the slip to my synapse, solar panels and hay ricks, from cooling towers to quarry crushers, evidently derelict. I can hear the synths and the Honda Civic slow down between us, caught by caged light over a fire escape when the air empurples, attracting blue tits to a crumble in the brickwork. I can hear the blood slosh around the canister of my head, Uber Mercedes Benz, whose speakers scatter the last drops of dubstep, now expunged from the historical record. Chugging shellac by dint of big black hums a little Steve Albini blues with a plum bass twilight twitters in the reeds by the river. A lifeboat sized dumpster floats past moss and tin mushroom caps on the roof where the steam is sap pours out clouds as paste and pines as grease stains on the Braille Valley Bringle. Cut by a cross planted at a blind spot that marks a roadside memorial. Like who can forget dropping off the Soviet-owned hydroelectric dam in the 1997 classic GoldenEye? I'm obsessed with just breezing through the Sturmund drain, surrounded by a thousand miles of highland mist, checked by the cardigan-clawed guitar notes that Kurt Cobain ate with his voice. Is the music my mom, whose name is Kim, kept in the car when we drove to the mall at the hem of a hill where the Shell gas station glows at the root of a Skyrim rainstorm battering the sheep are dumb as shit and the birds are no bigger than bowling pins. And lo, a long haul truck with a map of the planet painted on its side, parked at the foot of a two bath mountain with transmission towers and power cords strung together with laundry lines. Between the carbonaceous shale and cracked pipe, between the container ship and fingertip, the feeded mass of starfish and clams slushed around Stanley Park, watching the ocean soak up the oil slick to the mumble of a third beach drum circle surrounded by heads composed of white dreads Go trees that clunk 600 years in every direction. Is fibrous 40 degree heat flecked with sweat. The humidity index blows into the lung, barely breathing. Ballad of the guy charged with a DUI in every bucolic town. 
The moon alights to boys with brass knuckles in roadside bars that boast topless bull riding on Wednesday nights for key bumps in the suburban smoke pit have thrown the punch in which your tooth spoon from your mouth black bears murmur under the gondola shadow toward the secretion of garlicky animal fat splayed upon paper bags served by septum piercings and Starbucks, their panacea, in strip mines, their pain. And they are all to the workday as crabgrass is to the canine digestive system presently engaged. Luminous snail tracks on the brick wall bright even when it's overcast scrawl and suddenly stop at a spider's web baroque in its overlay of tessellated fuzz compared to the boulder lines of a Big Mac box in the epistolary delivery of Uber Eats driving a Tesla over a plebeian pigeon's nest in a pothole, as we know. I actually litter the landfill myself as microplastics partly obscured by banana peels the motor graders mill like bears before they're buried from view. Guitar chords descending as snowflakes do, right smack into the humpback mountains, shifting quietly, unless you consider feedback to be fundamental to the rabbit's guts that the crows pecked on the lumber road crusted with ice. After the dirt bikers have run over them, with all that green screen, even James Bond is bored by how shitty the world looks. On my commute, the bus is a truck, and if it crashes, I'm fucked. Thanks. <laughs>